what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, my name's Leslie. I am the Farm and Pastor's Wife and you're here in my kitchen and I'm going to cook for you guys today something I have never made before. And it includes an ingredient that I am pretty much banned from buying. Now, let me give this disclaimer here. It makes it sound like my family are dictating what I can eat and what I cannot eat. That is not true. It is my family's way of protecting me because this item I have absolutely no self-control over. And when I have this item, I am pretty much miserable for days afterwards. But I love them and I cannot stop eating them. Now, you guys, some of you who've been watching and I've mentioned this video coming up, this item that is like banned from our house, um, and you guys have begun to guess. You've guessed chocolate, you've guessed Snickers, and uh, all those are true. I absolutely adore chocolate, and I exhibit very little self-control over chocolate and Snicker bars. Some of you guessed ramps. Now, let me tell you, ramps is something I have never worked with or cooked with. In fact, I've wanted to go look for them, but I really am not sure I'd know what I was looking for, and th that's something I wanna learn more about is ramps. And, um, for those of you who don't know, that's like, it's a kind of a garlicky, oniony, green type that grows wild and you kind of go forage for. Anyway, um, no, it's not ramps. Let's see. And there was another guess. I can't remember what it was, but um, yeah, it's none of those things. And y'all are going to be so shocked when you see what it is. Now, <laughs> It's actually quite humorous when I tell you what it is, but let me tell you, it comes in a container and I open the container and I eat just one and then it's on from there. I cannot stop. Cannot stop. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and show you what the item is. I'm embarrassed to show you, but here it goes. I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to be giving you too much information on me in this video, but prunes. I love prunes. I absolutely adore them. I remember my mom, when I was a little girl, she would fix them on the stove top. She'd put them on the stove top, but a little water, add a little sugar. They didn't need sugar, but anyway, she would add a little sugar and some water and we, she would eat stewed prunes and they were so delicious. And then I found like you could eat them right out of the container. Funny story. Many times, this has happened many times as far as me eating them and eating them to excess and then dying for two days afterwards, like, like miserable, but case in point, And one reason why Bryant is probably so uh, firmly against me buying prunes is um, not that he has anything against prunes. It's just my lack of self-control where they go. He was doing a revival. <clears throat> I can't remember where we were, but uh, he was preaching a revival somewhere. And I am always on the front row. Now, a thousand babies can be crying and it won't faze him. A child can be talking to his mother. It won't faze him. Uh, an elderly adult can be answering their phone and it does not distract him one bit. But you let me do it like like I'm a, I'm like his safety net on the front row like it like I am I am what grounds him like if if he's preaching and and he he has a moment he looks at me and and I bring him that that focus 
It's just, it's, it's a husband wife thing. When I speak, it's the same thing. If he's there and I can look at him, it brings me some, some kind of, um, comfort and confidence. And so it, let's say I, I want to tell Caroline something and I write a quick little note on the bulletin and I slide it to her. He sees it. So any little thing that I do is he sees. So let me just say this one particular revival that day. I indulged with some prunes, this brand particularly, and um, I ate them till I could eat no more. And right before we started getting ready to go to revival, my stomach began to roll and began to talk like not 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 gas, but just my stomach rolling, and you could hear it. I mean, you it was so loud. Needless to say, I was in and out of that sanctuary that night multiple, multiple times. Like, I sat on the front row where I always sit, and I had to, and the bathroom, was you had to go out the front of the church, like at the pulpit. Like, here's the platform and pulpit, and the, the bathroom's off to the side, and you'd have to go out that way. Oh, my goodness. I know I'm giving you too much information on me, but... That is why I cannot have prunes in the house. And yes, I've been in them. But I have exhibited somewhat self-control. I've had no more than three at a given time. But today, we're going to make a prune cake. I've never had a prune cake. So let me tell you, I don't know that I'm going to like it. One, I looked at the recipes there's lots of spices in a prune cake. I do not care for spice cake. I'm not a spice cake person. Um, but I love prunes. And this, the glaze or the frost, it's not really a frosting. It's more of a glaze. Looks delicious. So I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. But we're going to make a prune cake. And I'm going to try my best not to eat these. We've got to go to our accountant in just a little bit. So hopefully... I won't eat more than this one. No more. Because we're going to the accountant. And I'm going to hear how a good idea how much we owe. <laughs> but anyway, when I get back, we're going to be making a prune cake. Y'all, I'm so sorry this was too much information. But. I love these things. I love them. Okay, everyone, we are back from the accountants, and so we'll just have to wait for him to work up all the figures and get the bad news, but no, I'm just kidding. So anyway, we're going to start with this cake, and the first thing we're going to start with is a cup of prunes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get them I'm gonna measure them out. Let's measure them right here. Oh, I just smelling them makes my mouth water. It smells so good. Oh my goodness. We're gonna get a cup of these measured out and I'm gonna be a pretty, do a pretty generous cup just because I know there's some, some spaces down in here that aren't, you know, they're kind of gaps. So we're gonna go with a generous cup going to put this in this little saucepan right here and to that I'm going to cover it with a cup of water and I'm just going to heat them for about 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. I'm going to drain the water and then we're going to mash them. So that's where we're going to start. I'll meet you back right here. So while that's heating, let's get started on other stuff. I have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour and I was almost out so it might be a little bit less but not much less. I don't think it's anything worrisome. So let's mix up our dry ingredients real quick. So I have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. I've got a teaspoon of baking soda and that is baking soda not powder. We're gonna do a teaspoon. Here are the spices. Now I'm going just right with it. We're gonna go right right along with it. 
And I'm gonna do a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. We're gonna do a teaspoon of allspice. And I'm gonna do a light teaspoon because allspice is kind of strong, so. I'm gonna go with a light teaspoon of allspice. And same thing with cloves. I'm going with a light teaspoon. Oh, this is not cloves, nutmeg, sorry. So we're going with a teaspoon of nutmeg. I don't know why I said cloves. Let me check my recipe just to be sure it doesn't have cloves, but I think it's just allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Let me check. I was correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a whisk and kind of just slowly get these started mixing in here. You could sift these. I don't I don't even have I used to have my mama's antique sifter. I don't even know where that sifter's at. The only thing I have now are those mesh things that you can kind of beat on your hand. And I usually don't even get those out. So, okay, we're gonna set this aside and now we're gonna work on some wet ingredients. So let's work on our wet ingredients now. I'm going in here with three eggs. And since I'm starting with the eggs, I'm not worried about doing it in a separate container because if I see a shell, I can just reach in there and get it. But no shells to be seen in there. All right, so let me give those just a little bit of a, like start them out. All right, so we're gonna also go in with a cup of oil. With the cup of oil, you can use whatever kind of flavorless oil you prefer. If that's avocado oil, or if you have a really virgin uh, coconut oil, or even vegetable oil, whatever your preference is, or canola oil. Um, and so to our cup of oil, our three eggs, we're gonna add a cup of sugar. Oops, I about just spilt that right in there. And I'm just gonna mix this up. You can definitely use an electric hand mixer for this, but um, I'm just gonna use my hands to make this fast and easy. So I'm also gonna add in some vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. If you're Leslie, if you're like me and a rebel, you add more and you spill it before you get it in there. Just kidding. But um, no, I love vanilla, so I always add a little bit more than what the recipe calls for. And many would call me a rebel for doing that. All right, so before I start adding the dry and the buttermilk, we're going to, um, I'm going to spray my pan and check on my prunes. My oven is preheating. And so I'm waiting a little bit longer to mix in the flour and the buttermilk and the prunes because my prunes are still cooking over there. I have a few left. Y'all. I don't know anybody that loves them like I love them. I love them. Do y'all like prunes? Is there anything weird that like y'all are just super crazy about that nobody else is crazy about? Let me know in the comments. Let me know. I surely, I can't be the only one that loves prunes that much. Oh my goodness, they are so good. Okay, so let's get back to the cake. Let me check the prunes again before we start getting back. They're still cooking away. They're not quite ready yet, so we're gonna keep them going. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add, I'm actually gonna switch over to a spatula here. We may use this some more in a minute. But I'm gonna add in some of the flour. And it smells very spicy. Spicy. 
I'll tell y'all a story about my mama. My mama was always so prim and proper when she was a young lady, a young mother. When I was a young lady, very prim and very proper. She never said anything that was considered, in her words, uncouth or vulgar or anything like that. I was raised very strictly by my mom. And, um, but yeah, she was, she was, um, and we're adding in some buttermilk here. She was very, uh, we were country, I mean, not country, like, we weren't country bumpkins, but we were farmers. My mom, my dad was a farmer, but my mom had class and she was a very classy lady. And, um, so, so she was also very proper. So, we lived in the country, we lived on a farm, but yet we, my mom very much knew how to carry herself and things not to say. And she would have never said anything out of the way. But when she was in the nursing home, she, she had rheumatoid arthritis and her hands were very much crippled and gnarled up because of the, the arthritis had taken such a toll on her hands. And, um, one of the nurses at, at where she was at um, got her to say something, taught her to say something. And, and so when I got there that night, the, the nurse says, Miss Bean, tell, tell Leslie what, she, what you are. And my mama took her little gnarl, car, gnarled up hand and she flipped what, there was no hair to flip, but she was acting like she was flipping her hair. And she said, I'm hot and spicy. Which was so out of character for my mother. It was so funny. And my mama just loved it. She thought it was the funniest thing. Because everybody would just laugh when she would do it. So, um, my mama did have a fun side. Even though she was super strict and super proper. Um, she did have a fun side as well. And oh, how I miss my mama. To this day, there are all kinds of things I would love to ask her. A lot about our family history, a lot about um, recipes. Um, my mom made something she referred to as muddle. And it, it, it was a fish soup. And um, I've tried to make it through the years, but I never could quite replicate the way my mama made it. And I asked her one day... My mom did have, it was some form of dementia. I'm not exactly sure. Let me check the prunes. She had some form of, I don't know if it was caused by whatever, like she had a stroke. So I don't, I don't know how much of it was caused from that or if it was just some sort of dementia. But um, I asked her one day, I said, Mama, can you tell me how to make muddle? Because it was delicious. It was so good. I know fish soup doesn't sound good, but it really was good. And it, a lot of the Eastern Carolina people have a fish soup, and it's very much like theirs, except they, a lot of theirs has potatoes in it. My mama's did not have potatoes, and it was definitely a tomato base. It had lots of bacon, lots of onion, had flounder. And so um, these are the things I remember about it. Hang on. So I said, Mama, can you remember how to tell me how to make muddle? And she said, why, yes, I can. And so I got out my pen and paper, and that's as far as we got. She could not even begin to tell me anything. And it was so sad, and I would give anything to have my mama here to, um, I mean, there's, th there's parenting questions I still would like to know, like, so forth. Y'all, my other spatula, the other day when I was making, I think it was the cornbread, my other spatula like this, it was a white one. It broke. I mean, like, it broke plumb off. And I was, like, searching for some of this clear glass or plastic stuff. I was searching for some of that in the, in the cornbread. I was, like, sticking my finger in. So, I'm being very gentle with this spatula because I can see that this one may break soon. It just broke plumb off. And I thought, oh, Lord, somebody's going to take a bite of that cornbread and bite into a piece of this plastic, whatever this stuff is called. All right, so now 
the, the batter is ready. It looks much like a persimmon pudding batter, if you've seen my persimmon pudding um, video. But it looks much like that, but we haven't put the prunes in yet. I'm gonna let them cool just a little bit. The water cooked out, the water cooked out of them, and um, I could hear them sizzling, and I thought, oops, I better get them off of there. So I'm really not gonna need to drain it, but if there was enough liquid in there that was still some left, we would need to drain it. So I'm just taking a fork, and I am mashing up these prunes. Now occasionally you might, prunes are normally seeded, and they, they've, they're actually plums that have been dried, but they, um, they've gotten the seeds out. But I guess in this cake, you definitely want to make sure they didn't miss a seed. Occasionally you might bite into one that has a seed, and if you're just eating it loose, that's okay. You can just spit it out, but you don't want a seed in your cake. So I am just taking my fork and I'm mashing these prunes up really well. So let me get that done. I'll bring you right back and we'll add it in. We'll spray our pan. The oven is preheated very low. It is actually preheated to 300 degrees. And so um, it, I don't think it's quite there yet because I didn't turn it on first thing. So it's almost there and I'm just gonna keep mashing these prunes. I wanna be sure they're mashed up well. There's no whole prunes. <laughs> now I'm wondering if this cake will have the same, if I eat like a lot of this cake, will it have the same effect on me that eating this container will have? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so I'll bring you back just as soon as I get these mashed up completely. It's not, it, they're pretty much there. I mean, it's just kind of a mush, but I did want to let them cool just a little bit. And um, so, yeah, we are pretty much there. But we're just going to let it cool, and I'm going to let my oven preheat, and I'm going to go ahead and spray my pan. Uh, if you don't use, I use Baker's Joy. It has flour already in it. It's a spray that has flour already in it. But if you don't have that, just use some oil and flour your container or some Crisco or something. Grease and flour your pan. So, all right, I'm gonna do that. I'll bring you right back. Let's add these prunes in there, this prune mush. I'm gonna use this spatula to be sure I'm getting everything out. And then I'll wipe off that fork. Now, I used to love my mama's stewed prunes. Like I said, she added a little, I think she added a little bit of sugar to them. And uh, I remember working in a nursing home when I was younger, and we would feed that to patients who needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we would, some patients had a daily um, order for prunes on their, on their um, medication list or their care plan not necessarily a medication list, but on their care plan, we would have an actual order for prunes daily or maybe weekly or every other day or whatever. All right. I don't know about this, y'all, but we're going to see. We are going to see. All right. So we're pouring this beautiful batter with my favorite thing in the world, prunes, in here. And we're gonna see what this cake tastes like. All right, and like I said, the oven is preheated to 300 degrees. I think it says to stay in there for about 30 minutes, but I will let you know for sure when we come out, let me give this batter a taste. Gotta taste the batter. And I'm not afraid of raw eggs, so. 
If you are, just don't do it. <laughs> just don't taste it, but I'm gonna give it a taste. Definitely a spice cake. So, I don't know. Remains to be seen, but it's going in a 300 degree oven. I'll see you back in just a little bit. Let's go over the icing. <clears throat> We have a fourth of a cup of butter that I've already actually dropped down in here. And I have a heaping cup of sugar. The recipe actually calls for a cup and two teaspoons. Anyway, I just did a heaping cup and figured it good. Um, so, we're also going to get a half a cup of buttermilk. Let me grab that. I'm going to add some vanilla over to the milk. The buttermilk. I'm also going to grab a teaspoon of water. And with the buttermilk. These measurements are so slight, I'm not even really sure, but okay. And I need a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and I'll just go ahead and add that to the sugar. So let me go over the ingredients for the icing or the glaze. Again, it's a cup. Hang on. A cup plus two teaspoons, or in my case, a heaping cup of sugar, fourth of a cup of butter, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. We have a half a cup of buttermilk, a teaspoon of water, and a teaspoon of vanilla, or a half a teaspoon. You know me, it's probably a half, a, it's probably a whole teaspoon. And that's it. So we are just gonna, when there's about five minutes left on the cake, we'll start our ice and we'll go over to the stove. We'll just get it all together, bring it to a slow simmering bowl, not a fast bowl, but just a slow bowl. Let it go for about five to seven minutes, not stirring after we get it all mixed. After the initial stir, we won't stir any more. And um, then we'll let it go for about five to seven minutes. And when the cake comes out, we pour it on that hot cake. So. All right, we're gonna see how this turns out. There's about six minutes left on the timer, so we're gonna go ahead and start on the icing. I'm gonna put it back here, melt the butter and the sugar, and um, I'm gonna get the buttermilk and everything over here, and I will see you in just a second. All right, guys, I've got um, over here in this other pot beside me, I'm boiling some chicken. We're going to have um, my creamy chicken chili. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I think I've done it several times, two or three times on this channel. Um, go check it out. It is wonderful, and I have been kind of craving it, so... Um, I'm gonna see how long we need to let this cook. I'm thinking it's between five and seven minutes, but let me go check. All right, so we are, I'm gonna quit stirring at this point. I just wanted to stir until the butter got completely melted. I'm gonna quit stirring at this point. And we're gonna bring it to a low, soft boil and we're gonna let it boil five to six minutes until it starts to turn dark, but it's still pourable. We don't want this a caramel sauce. We want it to still be a liquid. So um, I'll bring you back when we're almost there. Okay, everybody, this has been kind of fun to watch, but you can see it's turning dark and I'm just gonna set it over here so it doesn't spill out on my stove. You can see the dark color coming up in here. It's been kind of a fun reaction to watch this. So let me get the cake out and see if we're ready. Okay, the recipe says to pour it on immediately as it comes out. The cake is absolutely beautiful. Um, the icing or the glaze is what I'm iffy about. I don't know if that foam was supposed to go away or what. I don't know. 
That may have been too liquidy. I'm not sure. We'll see. We're going to see how it tastes. So I'll bring you back in just a little bit when it's time for Bryant to give this a taste test. So do any of you know, was the icing supposed to look that way or what? Bryant's been in here cleaning up one of his grills outside. That's what you've probably seen him. Oh, you see Mocha. That's Caroline's dog, Mocha. <laughs> But Brian's been out there working on uh, one of his grills, the flat top, and cleaning it up and getting it all spick and span. And so, I don't know if that's what that icing is supposed to look like or not. It says it's supposed to pour. It says it's not to become sticky. Icing should pour. Well, that poured. So, and it remove cake from oven and pour on icing immediately. Allow to rest on the counter, serve warm. If you're not able to serve immediately, you can reheat the entire cake in 200 degree oven for approximately five minutes. Individual slices reheat in the microwave for 10 seconds. It's okay. We will see. I'll have to call Brian in in just a little bit. He is busy. I know the, the flat top has um, aggravated him. We haven't used it in such a very long time. And then when you go out there to check it, you know, it's because it sits out there in the open carport, it's not an enclosed garage or anything. So some elements do get to it. Not everything, because we have the lids covered over on it. But, um, you know, the as goodness, we live in North Carolina, so the temperature is freezing one minute and 75 the next. So condensation adds up. So He's been grinding the rust off of it and working hard on it. So we'll see. All right. So I'm going to call him in in just a minute. I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit and we'll see what he thinks of this cake, this prune cake. Um, I have, well, you saw me have a few of these. I just love to smell them. I love everything about them. Love them. All right. Let me see when he can come in. Well, I found these two hardworking, dirty, stinky fellas, and they need some good, sweet cake. So we're going to let them try it and see what they think. We've never had it before. So here we go. Looks great. I've never had it before. Looks great. Let's try it. What's it called? Prune cake. <laughs> Good. Pretty good. Daniel says it's pretty good. Very moist. Very mm -hmm. moist. Really good. Okay. Needs a cup of coffee, don't it? Cup of coffee or a cup of milk. Milk. That's a that's a milk cake. They both said that's a milk cake. If it was drier, coffee. Okay. Milk. okay. It is very moist. Moist is it not is. the word. Yeah. That's probably that icing I poured on top. No, I don't want any. Well, okay. It is very much a spice cake. That is not my cup of tea, but. <laughs> That's why you didn't want to buy it. <laughs> but, hey, the, the, we've, I've kind of told him a little bit about me and prunes. She's got an addiction. Like, they've been banned from my house. When I pick him up, he's like, ah! Yep. And I told him about the revival you preached. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs up, okay. All right. All right, thank you, fellas. All right, well, there you have it. It's a delicious cake, and I will see you next time on the Farm and Pastor's Way. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.